the Thoughty OT podcast. What has been your experience with experiences with friendships and relationships and what barriers have kind of come up that, that have prevented you from moving forward in these areas? I can't really speak much for relationships, but in terms of friendships, it's incredibly difficult for me to make friends. That's partly because of my autism. Mm -hmm. Well, that is actually all to do with my autism. Trying to find people with similar interests is always difficult. And it's not something that's like the stuff that I enjoy doing, the stuff that interests me is not easily researchable online Mm -hmm. because it's sort of hidden away on Facebook or it's hidden away as an advertisement on a meetup or something like that. So, sure, sure. but I mean, I have one friend and I've known this friend now for years and I still speak to him and he's still happy to speak to me, but I can't rely on that one friend. So it'd be nice to have other friends. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. People, because when you have other friends, you uh, those people back you up those people give you positive reinforcement so that if you're being pressured by your parents if your parents are having a go at you all the time then at least mm-hmm. you have someone who's maybe on your side well sure, you have a different sure. you have a different point of view as well it's it's not just about being on your side it's about having a different point of view and people with who look at you in different ways is always better than people that look at you just one way and I think criticism is good I think in moderation and I think positivity is good also in moderation and at the moment I'm getting a lot of criticism and and no positivity because it's it's a lot more it's a lot easier to criticize me than it is to be positive towards me because Hmm. you know if you asked I mean, this is this is no secret. But if you ask my parents or my sister, what uh, what are the positive things about me? They'd be hard pressed to find good things to say about me. If you ask them negative things, they have loads of things that uh, I'm not good at or problems that they have. That's not very nice at all. (laughs) It's 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 one of those things where they're very honest about it. They're not trying to be mean about it. It's their honest opinion. They, they're not interested, you know, they're not interested in my interests as well. So sure. that is where some of that lack of positivity comes because they don't see, they don't value mm. my interests. So, yeah. Sure. I know that, that particularly like, as, a, as I said, with that kind of post kind of 18 age, you know, when, when we are in school, we have pretty much all of our social interaction or opportunities for social interaction kind of laid out for us it's not always the best and easiest and there's a lot of bullying and 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 difficult situations at school but it, it it is kind of set up like that and when when particularly for me when I went off to university I quickly found out that if I wanted to make friends I needed to like find them I needed to go out and find friends and chat to people and it was something that I really struggled with at the time and it took me a long time actually to feel comfortable with kind of approaching people or talking to people or even going to events in groups and and finding friends Mm. so it's it's definitely like a very unsupported aspect of things but I know that someone in in my own life someone that I know um, had quite a, a lot of success going to there's this this place called like Andy's Man Club, I think. I think they have a few places around around the UK, um, which is basic, basic an opportunity for 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 men to kind of meet up and have a chat and and talk about like mental health aspects of things, like things to do with their life, things that they're struggling with. And the person I'm talking about is, is is autistic, and and they've found that to be really, really, really great for them. But it's it's kind of like, it's not set out for you. It's not like after school they can be like, hey, hey let's let's help you sort your social stuff out for the, the time after school, or you know, 
you know, this is the path that you're going to take down for, for, for going through work. And there's not really much of that. And I think that's, that's really a tough part, a part of life that I think it's, it's taken me a long time to really get a grasp of and understand how to navigate, you know? Well, I've tried to, uh, I've tried to do, as you say, try to find groups to be involved with and try to make friends and stuff like that. But it's, it's kind of difficult because it's so easy to feel left out all the time. And I, I, I try to go to London Film and Comic Con, for instance. Oh, nice. And I, my friend stopped going with me because he gets bored of like the repetition of going every year. Unless there's someone right. that he really wants to see, he doesn't want to do it with me, right? Sure, doesn't want to go sure. there with me, right? But that's kind of like your your kind of yearly kind of routine yeah, thing that you like to go but, to. And... But the thing is, is you think you make loads of people because everyone there is like minded. You think you will make loads of friends, but I don't make I don't make any friends when I'm there. There'll be a couple of people that I get into conversations with, but for the most part, if you go to something like London Film and Comic Con, it's 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 kind of everyone keep, kind of keeps to their own little groups. No one yes. wants to mingle. Yeah. There's no one. There's no one by themselves. I think. I think now nine out of ten times, there's no one by themselves, and um, and so I and 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 it's a huge effort for me to go to London Film and Comic Con. I mean, it's like it's got some of the worst things for autistic people there, like Busy sensory, places, sensory, sensory. Yeah. <laughs> you know, taking pictures with celebrities and stuff like that. It's it's a real hurdle for me. It's it's definitely hard to 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 kind of form those friendships and particularly something that that's hard for me is maintaining friendships. Like I'm quite good at like meeting people and and talking to new people, but I think just like the intricacies of you know how how people are in terms of like texting and you know having to maintain things and having to organize things. I think that's something that I really struggle with. And and also to be honest, the the majority of people that I'm friends with and people that I know, they tend to be not in my physical f- vicinity. Like they they tend to be people that I know online. And although that's, you know, although it's good to connect with people who are kind of like minded and they, and they, they, they may be autistic themselves, it's still like. I feel like it's it's quite important for me to kind of get outside and get and go and do things with friends and things of that nature. Have you had have you had much success with like making friends online? Like have you have you joined any kind of groups or um Yeah, there's one group that I well there's a YouTuber who he's a he's a former well he's a former director but he's he he's an editor and producer. He has a YouTube channel where he does a podcast about films and TV and kind of like the sort what's, of sci-fi. What's the name? So his his name is Robert Meyer Burnett, and Robert he Meyer owns Burnett. the he owns the, the kind of the Burnett work as he calls it, and it's yeah Robert Meyer Burnett, and he has a YouTube channel where he does podcasts and he has all these different podcasts that he's set up by with different people who have worked who are working on those podcasts mm. about various corners of kind of geek fandom and stuff like that sure sure i th- i suppose i'm i'm meaning like like chatting groups like online like zoom like peer support meetings or like group meetings that people do online or particular servers in discord or you know any, anything like that and it could it could also be through things like social media like particularly i know a lot of people who have found you know friends and, and people to talk to you know they're, they're, they're kind of lonely and, and kind of isolated in their their own country and they yeah talk to other people online um who are who are also autistic and they, they find that to be quite good um quite transformative for them well i've i, I am 
part of many different uh, Discord groups and Twitter pages and social media pages or forums and stuff like that. So I've met people and people do know me. Um, I haven't, I'm not with any specific autism groups of any kind in that sense. What Hmm. I have done, what I have done is every Tuesday or every, yeah, every Tuesday I go to a meetup group for autistic people. Oh, nice. So in Wimbledon, it's called the Sunshine Recovery Cafe. Oh, yeah. And... It is where people sort of talk about their week, how their week has gone. And Mm -hmm. uh, we kind of chat about, we chat about... uh, It's funded by the NHS. Yes, it is, yes. And it's, 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 I think for me in the long run, I I feel that this is better than speaking online as a faceless person. I'd rather people get to know me in person than just... Than just typing away, hidden behind a computer. True, true, very true. I get, I get that. Like I, as I said, it's something that I feel particularly at the moment. You know, trying to find people to do stuff with and like go out and have a coffee with and stuff like that. It's it can be hard. Um, yeah, and plus, there's no one local to me as well. Anyone that I've sort of interacted with online, there isn't anyone really local to me. So it's it would be impossible to meet up with that particular person anyway so um sure 